A 2 kg mass is placed on a flat surface with a friction coefficient of 0.1. It is tied to a rope by a pulley to a 5 kg mass as shown. What is the acceleration of the masses? Let's first start by identifying the types of forces and the directions on the two masses. Starting with the 2 kg mass, we have its weight force, which is 2g, and a normal force exerted by the surface on the 2 kg mass. It also experiences a tension force due to the rope directed to the right, and of course it experiences a frictional force due to the surface. For the 5 kg mass, we have its weight force, 5g, directed downward, and we also have the tension going up due to the rope. It is worth noting that the two tension forces acting on the 2 kg mass and the 5 kg mass, although are in different directions, they are equal in magnitude because the two masses are tied together by the same rope, so they experience the same tension forces. Since the two masses are tied together by the same rope, they will experience the same acceleration. In other words, we can treat the two masses as a single mass that weighs 7 kg. Let's first look at the net force acting on the 2 kg mass. This is equal to its tension force minus the friction. And we know that the friction is further given by the coefficient of friction multiplied by the normal force. In a free body diagram, the normal force acting on 2 kg mass should be balanced by its weight force because the 2 kg mass shouldn't be accelerating in the vertical direction as it is moving horizontally on this table. So the normal force here also equals to its weight force of the 2 kg mass. So this equation simplifies into tension minus the coefficient of friction multiplied by the weight force, which is 2g. Using Newton's second law, we can replace the net force acting on the mass by the mass itself, 2 kilograms multiplied by its acceleration. Let's call that A. We can then rearrange the equation to make tension the subject, which gives us 2A plus 2 mu G. This is our first equation. Let's look at the net force acting on the 5 kilogram mass. The net force acting on the 5 kilogram mass equals to its weight force, which is 5G, minus the tension. Here, I'm treating the downward direction as positive and the upward direction as negative. The reason why I've done this is because previously, for the 2 kg mass, I've treated the direction to the right as positive and the direction to the left as negative. If the 2 kg mass was to move to the right, that is, to the, in the positive direction, then the 5 kg mass has to travel downward, which is in the positive direction. If the 2 kg mass was to move by a particular distance to the right, which is in the positive direction, the 5 kg mass has to move by the same distance downward. Since moving to the right is positive for the 2 kg mass, that means moving down is also, should also be treated as positive for the 5 kg mass. This is why here I've written the net force as 5g minus tension. The net force acting on 5 kg mass can also be written as its mass multiplied by its acceleration using Newton's second law. So here we have 5a equals to 5g minus tension. Let's call this my second equation. We can solve these simultaneously by replacing tension by the expression in the first equation. So we have 5a equals to 5g minus 2a plus 2 mu g. This is equal to 5g minus 2a minus 2 mu g. Let's group the acceleration on the same side. We have 7a equals to 5 times by 9.8 minus 2 times by 0 0.1 times by 9.8. Acceleration equals 6.72 meters per second squared. Now this acceleration is positive, which means the 2 kg mass will accelerate to the right, which is a positive direction, at 6.72 meters per second squared. For the 5 kg mass, the positive direction is downward, so this means that the 5 kg mass would accelerate downward at 6.72 meters per second squared. Now, I want to show you a different approach that's more simple in terms of the algebra. We said earlier, the 2 kg mass and the 5 kg mass can be treated as a single mass as they are accelerating together. So we can calculate the acceleration 
by taking the total net force acting on the two masses and dividing by the combined mass, that is 2 kilograms plus 5 kilograms. The net force acting on the two masses added together will be equal to the weight force of the 5 kilogram mass, which is 5g, minus the tension, that T, plus the tension acting on 2 kilogram mass. So here I add the tension because this is in a positive direction, minus the friction acting on the 2 kilogram mass, divided by the total mass. This would be 2 kilograms plus 5 kilograms. Here, the two tension forces will balance each other out, so these will cancel. In the numerator, this becomes 5g minus the friction. Now the friction force, remember, also equals to the coefficient multiplied by the normal force. And the normal force here equals to the weight force of the 2 kilogram mass. So we subtract mu times by 2g here, divided by 7. So this gives us 5 times by 9.8 minus 0 0.1 times by 2 times by 9.8 divided by 7. And we get the same answer as before, 6.72 meters per second squared. Now, what about the magnitude of tension in the rope? In the first part of the question, we've already calculated the acceleration of the two masses. We can revisit the forces acting on each of the two masses to then calculate tension. For the 5 kilogram mass, the forces acting on it include the downward weight force and the upward tension force. We know that the net force acting on the 5 kilogram mass is equal to the downward weight force minus the tension force. The net force is also equal to the mass times by the acceleration, which is equal to 5 kilograms times by 6.72 meters per second squared, equals to mg, which is 5 kilograms times by 9.8 meters per second squared, minus the tension. So tension is equal to 5 times by 9.8 minus 5 times by 6.72. This gives a value of 15.4 newtons. Let's look at a scenario where there are three masses in the same system. So here we have a 2 kilogram mass placed on a frictionless surface. It is tied to a rope by two pulleys to a 1 kilogram mass and a 5 kilogram mass as shown. What is the acceleration of the masses? Let's start by drawing the force vectors acting on each mass. For the 1 kilogram mass, we have a downward weight force of 1g and an upward tension of t. For the 2 kilogram mass, we have a downward weight force as well of 2g an upward normal force that will balance the weight force. Let's call that N. And we also have two tension forces going to the left and to the right. Now, it is important to recognize that these two tension forces, T1 and T2, will be different in magnitude because they are in different ropes. This tension force will be equal to T1 that acts on a 1 kilogram mass. Whereas this tension force, T2, will be equal to the magnitude of T2 that acts on a 5 kilogram mass. If the tension are in different ropes or strings, they are likely to have different values. In addition to the tension, the 5 kilogram mass also experiences a downward weight force of 5g. When you have three masses in a system, it's much easier to calculate acceleration by combining the masses into a single mass. So its acceleration is equal to the total net force acting on the masses divided by the total mass. Let's treat the downward direction for the 5 kg mass is positive, the upward direction is negative. This means the right direction for the 2 kg mass is positive, the left direction is negative. For the 1 kg mass, the upward direction is positive and the downward direction is negative. Let's calculate the net force starting with the 5 kg mass. We have its weight force plus 5g minus the tension that acts upon it, which is T2. Let's look at the net force for the 2 kilogram mass. We have plus T2 going to the right, minus T1 going to the left. What about the 1 kilogram mass? We have plus T1 going upwards, minus 1g going downward. And this is all divided by the total mass, which is 5 kilograms plus 2 kilograms plus 1 kilogram. As you can see in the numerator, the T2 and the T1 values will cancel each other out. And this will simplify the equation into 4g divided by 8, which is 4 times by 9.8 divided by 8. 
This is equal to 4.9 meters per second squared. What about the tension forces in the rope? Again, once you find the acceleration, you can then go back to the force vectors of one of the masses to calculate the tension. Going back to the 5 kilogram mass, we know that it experiences a downward force of 5g and an upward force of t2. The net force acting on the 5 kilogram mass is equal to its mass times by its acceleration, which is 4.9 meters per second squared. And this is equal to its downward weight force, so 5g, 5 times by 9.8, minus the upward tension, which is t2. So t2 equals 24.5 newtons. Now remember that the tension acting in this rope is different to the tension value acting in this rope on the left hand side. So we need to use the acceleration and the force equation for either the 2 kilogram mass or the 1 kilogram mass to calculate the tension in the rope on the left. For the 1 kilogram mass, its net force can be expressed as its mass, which is 1 kilogram, times by the acceleration, which is again 4.9 meters per second, equals to the upward tension, which is T1, minus its downward weight force, which is 1g. This means T1 equals 1g plus 4.9. This gives a value of tension of 14.7 newtons. This concludes the video on multiple masses in a system.